Hello my most amazing and awesome artists. Today you're going to be getting a bowl that you can use a sharpie to write your name and class code on. That's going to be the first thing you do and then you can put it aside because we won't need that until last. Then you're going to be using clay and a slab to create your hand with texture and make it into your very own bowl that you will get to keep forever and ever. You'll have a texture toolbox full of different tools. The first one you're going to want to use is a smooth roller. This roller won't have any texture on it, or the texture would be smooth actually. I'm going to roll my clay slab out a little. A slab is a flat piece of clay that already has all of the air bubbles out of it. I only want to roll it enough so that it fits my hand. If your slab of clay already fits your hand, then you don't need to roll it out. In fact, I suggest not doing it because you need to do the pinky test. If your slab of clay is thinner than your pinky, it's too thin. I want your clay to be thicker or just as big as your pinky. Other than that, it's too thin and will stick to your mat. Pick up your slab of clay often, but carefully. If it's able to lift off of your clay mat, then that means that it's probably thick enough. If it starts to stick, that means you've rolled it too thin or pressed it out too much. Now I'm getting to use my texture toolbox. You will have a variety of different textures that you can lightly press into your slab of clay. Experiment with making different textures with these tools. Every tool will create a different texture and you could use that tool in different ways. Now if I don't like a texture that I tried out, I can erase it by dipping my finger in just a little bit of water and gently pressing on top or smearing it, that will make it go away just like an eraser. Then I can press a new texture on top and lift it up and it should be good to go. I have a lot of different tools that you can experiment. Some are wooden and in your supply bin next to your pencils. Some of these wooden pottery tools can be used to make different designs. Some patterns or designs might be wavy. Some might look like a fork and you can make different dots with them. But notice I'm not pressing through the clay, I'm just pressing on top. If I press too hard, not only will my clay stick to the table and I won't be able to take it off, but it all will also make a hole in my clay. And I don't wanna have a hole in it until I'm ready to cut it out. So I'm going to experiment with all my different texture tools, trying each side of them, maybe use the back side, use the front side, whatever you want. Once it's full of texture and you're happy with it, you're going to use your non-dominant hand. That's the hand that don't know how to draw. That hand that doesn't know how to draw is my left hand. My right hand is my hand that does know how to draw. So I'm carefully placing it down onto my clay and then I'm going to trace around it with my right hand. That's my hand that does know how to draw. For you, it might be your left. Get a buddy to help you do this, absolutely help a friend or Miss Q can help you as well. You want to hold that hand really still as somebody or you traces around it. When you remove it, your fingers should be as big as they are in real life. They shouldn't be teeny tiny sticks. If they are, that means that you moved your tool or your hand while you were tracing around it. You want to make sure that your fingers are thick, otherwise they will break off. Now I am cutting it out. So I'm going to put my hand back on top of it just so I don't cut any fingers off. But if it helps you, trace first and then cut. When you're cutting your hand out of your clay, you want to use your tool tall like a soldier. That means standing up nice and tall and not laying on its side like you would hold a pencil. You are going to hold it up nice and straight so that it cuts through that clay. It allow you to just peel off that extra clay if you've cut through it completely. But if you're having trouble cutting, please leave that extra clay there and I will come help you or a friend can help you cut through it completely before you pull that extra clay off. Now that extra clay is going to be important. We are going to use that to make a shape to put in the palm of the hand. So I'm going to use my extra clay that's already rolled out into a slab to make a heart. Now this extra clay over here I'm going to roll out so it looks like my other one but you could absolutely just use one that's already flat. Maybe you had that from rolling it out earlier. I'm going to put that clay aside while I use a little bit of water on my hand. I'm checking that I was able to pick up my hand and that none of my fingers fell off. I'm carefully dipping my finger in just a little bit of water and dragging it along the edges of my clay fingers. That way those clay crumbs get off from when I was cutting. It created some crumbs. If those crumbs are left there and it goes in the kiln to bake, they will turn very sharp. And we wouldn't want that. You want your hand to be nice and smooth other than the texture that you 
created. So once your fingers are smooth and there's no clay crumbs or bumps on the edges of the fingers, then I can use a heart tool to punch out a shape or heart out of my extra clay. Remember, that's also as thick or as thin as your pinky, no bigger and no smaller. I'm gonna smooth out the edges just like I did on my fingers, and then I need to make it stick. If I just stick it on the middle there, it'll fall right off, and it'll even fall off when it dries. This is why you have these toothbrushes on your bin and then nasty looking water. It's called clay glue to scratch and attach. I scratch both sides, both the heart and where I want to stick the heart and attach. It's called scratch and attach because you are making your very own clay Velcro. Both sides that you are attaching or sticking together need to have the texture to be able to stick. So I scratch and attach and then smush and smooth it down. You just saw me smushing down that heart to make sure it's really stuck. I should do the wiggle test. If I'm wiggling it and anything falls off, like a finger or the heart, that means I need to scratch and attach more or reattach. If a finger fell off, I would do the same method that I'd made for the heart by scratching and attaching. Now I'm going to carefully place it down in the bowl so that it stays. I'm being very careful doing that wiggle test, maybe moving a few fingers together so that I don't worry about them falling off as it dries. Once I have that hand in that bowl, that will allow it to mold into a bowl shape. It won't be in the bowl forever. When it dries, it will be in the shape of a bowl so that somebody could put something in it, like a treat, like maybe candy, or maybe you could put jewelry on it or you could give it to your mom or dad or grandma or brother or sister or put a toy in it whatever you want to use it for all right awesome artists i cannot wait to see what you create today don't forget that when you're finished you will clean up your area you will also clean up your hands any extra clay goes in miss q's extra clay bag it does not go home in pockets and all of your tools get returned to the bin that extra clay i just squished up into a clay ball i'm going to put it in that extra clay bag because i save it for every other class that needs to do clay and then I'm going to use an art wipe or sponge to clean up my mat so that my next class coming in doesn't have any clay crumbs left there. All right awesome artists thank you so much for listening and I can't wait to see what you make today. Have fun!